Justice John Froneman. Our order reflects that SASA and CPS should continue to fulfill their respective constitutional obligations in the payment of social grants for a period of 12 months as an extension of the current contract. To the extent necessary, our earlier declaration of invalidity of that contract must be further extended, as well as the suspension of that declaration of invalidity. In the event that CPS wishes to alter the content of its financial obligations, the order makes provision for it to approach National Treasury for its consideration and approval to be confirmed by this court after a report to it by Treasury. As the, my brother Madlanga J wrote a separate concurring, judge, concurring judgment, and as his ju judgment shows, there is another valid way of arriving at an identical outcome. In his judgment, Madlan Gajay accepts that this court has a wide remedial order to power, to power to order CPS and SASA to fulfill their obligation of paying social grants. However, Madlan Gajay finds difficulty in the convoluted way of first extending the contract uh, presumably with the extension carrying the original invalidity and only to then extend the suspension of the declaration of invalidity. Madlanga J sees no bar to making a direct order to the effect that, in terms of the court's wide remedial powers, CPS has to continue paying social grants. The Minister bears the primary responsibility to ensure that SASA fulfills its functions. She appoints its chief executive officer. There is little that the CEO can do without her direction. Attempts to obtain evidence of what steps she took after all paid two to ensure that beneficiaries would continue to be well catered for drew a blank. These aspects require further scrutiny, but that can only be done after the minister is joined to the proceedings in her personal capacity and given an opportunity to explain her conduct in relation to these issues. In the result, we, the following order is made. One, the Black Sash Trust is granted direct, direct access to bring this application. Two, freedom under law in PC is granted leave to intervene. Three, Corruption Watch, NPC, RF and the South African Post Office uh, CSOC Limited are admitted as friends of the court. Four, it is declared that the South African Social Security Agency, SASA, and Cash Paymaster Services, PTY Limited, CPS, are under a constitutional obligation to ensure payment of social grants to grant beneficiaries from 1 April 2017 until an entity other than CPS is able to do so and that a failure to do so will infringe upon grant beneficiaries' rights of access to social assistance under Section 271C of the Constitution. Five, the declaration of invalidity, or invalidity of the contract is further suspended for the 12-month period from 1 April 2017. Six, SASA and CPS are directed to ensure payment of social grants to to grant beneficiaries from 1 April 2017 for a period of 12 months on the same terms and conditions as those in the current contract between them that, will exp that would have expired on 31 March 2017, sub subject to these further conditions. 6.1. The terms and conditions shall a contain adequate safeguards to ensure that personal data obtained in the payment process remains private and may not be used for any purpose other than payment of the grants or any other purpose sanctioned by the Minister in terms of sections 20 sub 3 and sub 4 of the Social Assistance Act 13 of 2004 and b preclude anyone from inviting beneficiaries to quote opt in unquote, to the sharing of confidential information for the marketing of goods and services. 6.2, CPS may in writing request National Treasury during the 12-month period to investigate and make a recommendation regarding the price in the contract. 6.3, 
National Treasury must file a report with this court within 21 days of receipt of the request setting out its recommendation. 6.4. Within 30 days of the completion of the contract of the period of the contract, CPS must file with this court an audited statement of the expenses incurred, the income received, and the net profit earned under the contract. 6.5. SASA must thereafter obtain an independent audited, audited verification of the details provided by CPS under paragraph 6.3. 6.6, .6, the audit veri verification must be approved by National Treasury and the audited verification must be filed by SASA with this court within 60 days. 6.7, CPS must permit the auditors appointed by SASA to have unfettered access to its fin financial information for this purpose. 7. The Minister and SASA must file reports on affidavit with this court every three months commencing on the date of this order, setting out how they plan to ensure the payment of social grants after the expiry of the 12-month period, what steps they have taken in that regard, what further steps they will take, and when they will take each future step, so as to ensure that the payment of all social grants is made when they fall due after the expiry of the 12-month period. Eight. The reports filed by the Minister and SASA as contemplate in, contemplated in paragraph 7 must include, but is not limited to, the applicable time frames for the various deliverable, deliverables which form part of the plan, whether the time frames have been complied with, and if not, why that is the case, and what will be done to remedy the situation. Nine. If any material change arises in relation to circumstances referred to in a report referred to in paragraph 7 or 8, the Minister and SASA are required immediately to report on affidavit to the Court and to explain the reason for and consequences of the change. 10. It is declared that SASA is under a duty to ensure that the payment method it determines 10.1 contains adequate safeguards to ensure that personal data obtained in the payment process remains private and may not be used for any purpose other than payment of the grants or any other purpose sanctioned by the Minister in terms of Section 20 sub 3 and 4 of the Social Assistance Act. And 2. Precludes a contracting party from inviting beneficiaries to opt into the sharing of confidential information for the marketing of goods and services. 11. The parties are within 14 days from the date of this order required to submit the names of individuals with their written consent, suitably qualified for appointment as independent legal practitioners and technical experts for the purpose referred to in paragraph 12 below. 12. The Auditor, Auditor General and any Perth person or persons or institutions appointed by the court after receipt of the name submitted under paragraph 11 shall, shall jointly and until otherwise directed by the court. Well, that's the constitutional court order there.